Good afternoon. Uh, apologies for readiness, but we want to make it to update ourselves with the latest figures. Fellow Kenyans, members of the press, you are aware about all the 47 counties have reported COVID-19 cases with Kisum County recording 129 cases alone and an average weekly positivity rate of 28.4%, which is very, very, very worrying. As the Council of Governors, we are working closely with the Kisum County COVID-19 Agency Committee to ensure that the measures are put in place to contain further spread of the virus. We urge the residents of Kisum and the other 10 neighboring counties, namely Sihaya, Omambi, Migori, Kisi, Nyamira, Busia, Pungoma, Vihiga, Kericho and Bomet, to ensure strict adherence to the raid down health protocols. Now we can address the issues, ladies and gentlemen, the issue of vaccination uh, outside the MOH approved facilities. As we continue administering the second dose of AstraZeneca, the Council of Governors wishes to appeal to the citizens to ensure that they are vaccinated in government approved facilities. Very, very important. Two, while there has been an overall increase in COVID-19 positive cases, there is a decrease of admissions in the hospitals, as indicated by our sampled 26 counties as follows. Isolation bands, in the last week, the total number of available bands in the isolation center was down by 138 beds to 5,922, meaning there is improvement. As for ICU beds, in the last week, the total number of ICU beds available was 184. Uh, while this week, the number of available beds is 188, a decrease by six beds. HDU beds, in the last week, the total number of available beds in the HDU facilities was 116. This week, it has come down to 106, that is by 10 beds meaning there's improvement in uh, the severe cases as opposed to the infections. Three, COVID-19 vaccination. Cumulatively, a total of 975,792 vaccine doses have been administered as phase one, as follows. Healthcare workers, 166, 1,225. Security officers, 82,745. Teachers, 153,096. Above 58, they are leading with 295,530. Others, 277, 803. Further, since the rollout of the second dose of their vaccine, a total of 8,181 persons have been vaccinated as follows. Healthcare workers, 4,607. Others, 1,514. Above 58, 1,053. Teachers, 606. Security officers, 41. We urge those who have received the two doses to continue observing all the government protocols. As the research is still going on to ascertain the extent to which the vaccine protects against infection and transmission. The studies are still on. Four, home-based isolation care. This remains a critical strategy in dealing with COVID-19 cases. In the previous week, the total number of patients under home-based care was 1,320, with a total of 16,283 recoveries. This week, the total number of patients is 1,623 who are under home-based isolation care with 18,730 recoveries. 
the number of recoveries has increased in the recent weeks. We thank healthcare workers for remaining committed towards this cause. Five, the trend sector, alcohol, liquor business. Last week, the National Mood Agency Command Center on COVID-19, in cooperation with other stakeholders, launched the alcohol industry, COVID-19 risk communication and com community campaign engagement strategy. The Council of Governors joins the National Multi-Agency Command Center um, to urge all bar owners to ensure compliance with all guidelines issued by the government. The county government will continue to play their critical role as far as liquor licensing is concerned and also strict enforcement of the guidelines. In view of this, county government will take drastic measures including suspension of licenses to unscrupulous operators. Six, implementation of COVID-19 protocols in the county ACD and vocational training centers. COVID-19 tests in county vocational training centers have been going on since last month and will continue throughout this month. In addition, ECD learners, young ones, have resumed learning from mid-term break in order to complete term three, end of the July transition to grade one in primary schools. To safeguard the ECD learners and trainees in VCT, VCTs, county governments have ensured that all of the protocols are being implemented to the letter in the institutions to minimize the spread of the virus. Further, in line with His Excellency the President's directive to enhance sustainable livelihood for Juakari workers, artisans, and trainees in VCTs, county governments are supporting the Minister of Education and the Kenya National Qualifications Authority in implementing the record recognition of prior learning policy framework. We are also cooperating with the uh, NYS and uh, a meeting with the chairman of NYS, General Joke, and the DG, so that we can cooperate in terms of training the border border riders and bring discipline and order to that group. This will ensure that those in the informal sector will be assessed and certified. This will ensure that their skills and competencies are recognized therefore enhancing their bargain power at the workplace. A few non-COVID issues. Let's break a bit, ladies and gentlemen. May I now draw your attention to non-COVID issues that are affecting the county government. As usual, number one is, of course, disbursement of county equitable share of revenue. Despite being only three weeks to the end of the financial year, the total outstanding amount owned to county government is 105.9 billion. 105.9 billion. And we have only three weeks to go. This has, the, the, the negative impact of this has been to paralyze various activities in the counties in the following ways. One, they have slowed implementation of development projects. It has, two, they have equally slowed the fight against COVID-19 pandemic. Three, they have sent land to accum accumulation of pending bills. Four, they have delayed the payment of salaries of all the county staff. We call upon the National Treasury to expedite the release of these funds as county governments are grinding to a halt. This is an issue I've discussed with the governor of the central bank to see whether we can affair us some uh, credit. That was on the 1st of May, just before Madraka Day. And we shall continue engaging the governor of the central bank. And we shall invite him also to the Council of Governors meeting. The, uh, seven, waste of management. No, number two, under non-COVID areas. 
waste, of manage, waste management, medical waste, such as personal protective equipment, still continues to be disposed into the general municipal waste streams that is generated within urban areas. This poses risks of further spread of virus. We call upon NEMA to cooperate, cooperate with the Council of Governors and County Government in the enforcement, training, assessment of more environmental inspectors in order to strengthen the enforcement, which has been a challenge. However, on a positive note, counties, 15 counties, uh, have, no, counties have designated dump sites and land fields, and this has helped to ensure municipal waste disposal in undesignated areas is avoided. On the same positive note, I'm happy to note that additional 15 counties have received ampe ecostre medical waste machines, which will now safely dispose of dangerous medical waste. Number three of non-COVID non -COVID issues. Ladies and gentlemen, let us now address issues climate change. Tree growing is one of the climate action strategies in mitigating ne negative impacts of climate change. County governments have demonstrated a unwavering commitment towards this course through rigorous tree growing exercise in marking the seventh and final annual development conference and the World Environmental Day. Cumulatively, that eight counties have grown 5 million, 103,608 tree seedlings during the ongoing rainy season. Counties are making effort to grow additional 7 million, 378,150 seedlings before the end of the rainy season. In conclusion, as I conclude, I wish to congratulate the Council of Governors CEO, Lady Justice Jacqueline Mugeni, MBS, on being appointed as a judge of the Environment and Land Court. She has been one of the cornerstones of devolution and has played a major role in making devolution the great success it is today. I wish her the best in a new assignment, and I believe she will be impactive to the judiciary, as he has been to devolution since 2013. We shall celebrate her, and we shall be giving her a final luncheon next week on Wednesday. Asante Nisana. Any issues? Yes, ladies. Sustentive? Yes. Okay. Very interesting question. May I just quickly answer that before we come to you? Um, actually, we are now fully mobilized in the preparation for the, the problem which is happening in the 11 counties. And uh, we are monitoring them very, very closely. And we are also uh, uh, asking for more assistance from the national government so that uh, our colleagues in the 11 counties can cope up with that spike which followed mostly the Madraka Day celebrations. As for the Wajir, yes, it's true, there is an acting governor in, in, in Wajir, and uh, we have our old uh, governor, Ambassador Mahmoud, um, who is now camping in Nairobi. We are waiting for, he's waiting for the three-judge three, three bench 
so that his case can be heard and there's a very high probability of success. So let's wait and uh, get this Wamusu a court. And Muim Sana. Of course, our own colleague. Let's go on. The lady? Yes. It's mainly um, the PPEs, more than anything else. Because the county, council, county is uh, having enough beds, and in fact, quite a number are still not being occupied. Uh, both isolation, uh, high dependency beds, and also ICU beds. So it's mainly the consumable PPEs which we are really concentrating on. And also enforcement of the protocols. Yes, madam? Talkers. Very good. In terms of uh, assisting our colleagues, we are monitoring them on daily basis and anything they need, we are getting the necessary assistance so far. So we are quite comfortable on that one. As for KEMSA, KEMSA, uh, we have now appointed, with a new change, the new board of directors. One of the directors was recommended by the Council of Governors and we are monitoring uh, KEMSA on a daily basis to ensure the biggest challenge right now is the release of medicine because of uh, the, the debt which we owe. And we have told them as long as the governors give the schedule of payment, they should release uh, the medicine they need and we shall follow it up even today to ensure that is happening. Hey. Very good uh, question. As of now, we would discourage lockdown, honestly. It is causing a lot of damage to the economic sector and uh, it still doesn't help much. So, as much as possible, and our people know that now, and they, they are reasoning to us because it, they would hate to be locked down again. So, we are hoping and we are monitoring to ensure that the protocols are maintained to avoid Lockdown. Go on. Raise the hand first. One of you. Yeah. Go on. Mm -hmm. Very good. He is very nice. He is very nice. He is very nice. He is very nice. He very concerned. He is very concerned. He is very Na but Mzuri, Professor Nyanyong, he is to an eleven a month a health sana. Kwavira Rikua Waziri, wa health. Nana Penda Mambi a health. Tukona <coughs> Akika, Atawe Sana, Naima Neno, ya COVID. Naima Neno, Irifanyika Wakatu, a Madraka de Irkua Sig Upendoake, was up how what were to Tokesha for Winky, Okajako Maparabara. Na ilikuwa gumu sana kwa control. Kwa hivyo tunajua si upendo wa governor watu wa kisumu ni hile excitement na mandraka de celebration. Na kwa vile tukona na ndia ya chairman wa hii kamati ya avia. Tunakika 
hata pambana na hii akitaka usaidizi saidi tuta, tutaenda huko hata sisi kusaidia yeye hapana hapana kwa sasa hiyo itakuwa rasmi sha ya mwisho kabisa thank you asante